Good morning, good morning, good morning, my YouTube family and friends. I am here again this morning. I'm thankful to live to see another day. It's a grand rising Sunday morning. Wherever you are, I'm hoping that you're rising, that you have risen, that you are awoken in good spirits, and that you are remembering to be thankful as you go about your Day's activities. I did the video the other day about teachers and the struggles that we face in the classrooms, and not only in the classrooms, but with parents also. How it's it's tough because they are refusing to acknowledge that their children are who they are, and the blame always comes back at the teacher's feet. And so I say for the, those of us who continue to, to hold fast, who continue to be present, continue to want to have that love and that need to continue on the journey, I say unto us, let us find some ways of making some changes. And so this morning, I just want to do two things. First, I want to, three things. First, I want you to remember to like the videos. Guys, go back and watch those videos. As I said, my channel is a one-stop shop where you can find a little bit of everything here. You know, I've been reading to my grandchildren. Those are good videos to go back. And I have been doing the Dr. Seuss um, series. And so there are books there that, um, there are videos there that you can share with your children. Um, I have some dancing videos because, you know, I'm still on my weight loss journey. That's how this all got started. Um, so there's some, some tips there for weight loss, some cooking, some poetry, Langston Hughes, Louise Bennett, and my favorite, Maya Angelou. So just go listen to them, teach your children that it's okay to, to write poetry, to, to recite poetry, to put feelings into what they do and to make their work come to life. Remember the people who write, they, they, they wrote from the heart. Words, they know words, they, they have good vocabulary skills, and they write, and in the writing it's able to be edited and tweaked down and chain, make changes until it become it becomes what we are using today. So there's no perfection, as I said, in anything that we do. There's absolutely no perfection. But as we as we go forth, we do that. Um, <laughs> all right, so the light is in my eyes. Okay, let's do this. All right, so, all right. So the ring light was in my glasses. I could see it. <laughs> but anyhow, guys, so as I was saying that, um, let us just do the things that we, um, that we can, can go back to the channel and just watch the videos and, and, and share them. There are some that I'm singing, um, way back when we just started. So go back and, and if you like them, just give a thumbs up and share them out for me. Trending live. Thank you. Buddha. Namaste. Thank you for sharing my videos. Um, all of you who have grabbed a video or two and share them, um, Jay Jordan, thank you so much. All of you who have been sharing the videos, I want to say thank you and just know that I appreciate your support as the channel continues to grow little by little. Um, so today I want to first, um, the second thing I want to do is to share some strategies for us as as teachers who, um, you know, we, we go in every day and as I said, the disrespect is so, so it's, it's, it's so much. It doesn't matter 
where you teach today. As, as um, one of my supporters, she said this morning that when the highest, the people in the highest form, uh, when they do not appreciate teachers and what teachers do, then it trickles down, you know? And so we have to find ways, um, along with everything else that we face daily, we have to find ways to make sure that when we go in and when we do the things that we like to do, we embrace this profession. And sometimes I wonder why we like to punish ourselves so much. It seems like a punishment. It just seems like so unthankful. It, it, it's such an unthankful profession. You know, nobody, so many people, I wouldn't say nobody. There are some people who appreciate us. But then so many, they don't even care. You know? And so, I want to um, tell us that sometimes, as I said before in the video, pick our battles. Learn to pick our battles. Because not every little thing should become uh, an argument. Children, have they, they have no filter. And so, they don't care what that comes out of the mouth. They just open it and they don't care who stands in front of them. They just say what they say mean things they just say it maybe at home in their disagreements this is the way that adults are being spoken to and so they think it's the right way so sometimes just ignore um i'm going to do a project to help you deal with something i'm going to give you a hands-on piece later on um just to help you deal with situations um the other thing is use the children who are focused because it's not all the children who are disrespectful and, and, and kind. It's not all the children who are in the classroom who are there and don't want to learn. There are some children who they come in and they, they want to learn. They want to do well. Speak with them. Speak to them and tell them that they have a voice too, that they can 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 ask their classmates to do better. They can speak up and speak out against the disruptions and the disrespect that go on in the classroom. They can be effective and they can affect some of the changes that need to be made. So get them on your side. Talk to them and ask them if somebody spoke to their parent like that, if they would have appreciated it. And so if we create that kind of a, a support and we get that enforcement going, a lot of times the kids will, as I've seen it happen in my class, when kids try to become just unnecessary, just immature and silly, that children, a student said, how dare you say that? Don't you say that again about my teacher or, you know, so it can work if we can get the right children to rise up and, and take their education back from those who are disruptive and are unwilling to work with the program so that they can, they can be successful. So those are strategies that I thought about. Um, use the reverse psychology. Sometimes when they come at you hard, you just say, you know, I so love you. I so love and appreciate you. I just don't like the negative behavior. Kill them with love. Kill them with the love. I remember when I was kind of getting fed up because you you go in and you do so much and bring in so much to support them because a lot of them, they come in and the only meal they're getting is what they get at school. So, you know, after a moment they come in and if they're late and didn't get to, get to breakfast in the morning, that they're grumpy. And so you bring something in and you offer them something. But then there are the same kids who later on look at you and it's so disrespectful and use the profanity so easily in front of your face. And then you, 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 your feelings feel crushed and you, you start wondering, why am I doing all this when they're so unthankful? There's so much ungratefulness. But then you still come in the next day 
and you still load up the bag, extra bag and you drag it in and you're reaching out. And so this weekend, my conversation with my aunt again, and again, she reminds me, she says, as we spoke about her situations um, in, the, in the education field, she owns a school, she has her own school, and she says, I let them know, I love them, I just don't love the bad behaviors. Because a lot of times the behaviors they display, it's not necessary. It is so totally unnecessary. If, if you know, it's, it, I wonder sometimes, I said, do they even think you have children who will start going at another child and you step in to say, that's not necessary. And they turn on you like you're trying to save them from getting suspended, from getting into a fight. But they, they, they turn it around and you and, so you shut the F up, you go sit somewhere and go shut the F up. And you're looking at them like, do you even think, have you ever thought that I'm trying to, 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 to save you from the harsher things that will come? And so each day that we go in, it's prior first, my teachers, prior first, as you get out of your bed and you head through the door, ask God to be right there with you. And as you enter your, your building, again, you give thanks to God that you got safe there safely, but also ask him to continue the journey with you, to enter with you. Because it's not only children that can become disruptive. You have adults too who are going through things and will take it out on other teachers. Uh, you know, pick your battles and you move on. And as you walk the walk to your classroom. Please, as you put the key in that door, just tell the Lord to enter with you. Sometimes I say when we ask him to come in with us and to give us strength, I wonder if we get, <laughs> if in order to prove <clears throat> things that we get a harder fight. <laughs> I wonder that sometimes, but just still ask him to walk in with you and ask him to fight the battles for you. Because with us, we get frustrated, we get emotional, we, we, we become, we're humans. We're, and, and we go through those things. You, you have to, we have to understand that we're human beings. So sometimes when we, we raise our voices, it's because we're humans. And you come in and every day you're working with 16 to 20 kids, 27 kids. And you're dealing with these behaviors. I don't care how strong you think you are. At some point, you will be broken. But as you become broken, and as you, 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 you face the challenges, I just want us to remember that sometimes it's best not to say one word. A lot of times, there's a um, we get so much pushback. Every child must be must be engaged, and every child must and and and. Our supervisors and uh, these people who come in with their unrealistic um, expectations. They want to see this, and, but you have the children who do not want it. And my, my, my question is, I always say, I don't give up on children. But if you want me to teach a curriculum that is way above their heads, and I'm breaking it down as, as, as simple as I can, and you don't want that, because you want the kid to be doing what the others are doing and you want what you want. You're going to have the kids that are going to fight back. And when they fight back, they push back hard and they want to leave the class. They want to avoid all of the learning as much as possible. And what are you supposed to do? You're going to fight the kid. No, you need to sit. You need to do this. You need to do. And the poor kid cannot do it. So sometimes we have to pick our battles. I... I had a student who, as soon as he gets in and, and the book comes out, can I use a bathroom? Now, my desk is at the back of my classroom. Well, at the right, as it relates to teaching. Because as you enter, my desk is there. And that's the back section of where I teach. I teach at the other end. Because that's where the smart board is. That's where my document reader is. That's where my podium is. Everything is in the, that section. So that would be the front. 
and I will do the attendance. I'll do what I need to do. And I woke up now to start going over the things. I walked around, checked work. And as soon as I get up there, he wants to go. So the, 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 the routine is that we have little slips of papers with our teacher's names. We have to, They have to fill in the date, um, the time they're leaving the room, where they're going. And their names are on it. So as soon as I walk up there here, he fills out the paper, puts it on my desk, and he expects me now to walk back to come and fill it out. And I would say, no, not now you'll have to wait. But he decides to walk out. What am I going to do? Raise my voice and tell, you need to get back in here now. No. I just pick my battles. I let him go. He has a pass. Let him go. It might not be signed, but let him go. And what I notice is that he'll go, but he'll come right back. And I would commend him for that. I would say, you know, thank you for at least coming back and not loitering in the hallways. So we got to pick our battles. You know, they spit at us hard, and sometimes we got to just close our eyes and say, God, you better take this on. They cuss at us. We can't cuss back at kids. And we shouldn't do that. So we allow that to just let it go. Close your eyes, breathe, and let it go. So as we go forth, guys, another, tomorrow is another day. Another day to face the challenges as, as educators, as teachers. And so we just make sure that we go with God. Never leave him far behind. Keep him by your side because without him by our sides, it's a tougher battle. It's a tough, tough, tougher battle to fight. And so the last thing is to remember to embrace who you are. Self-love is important. Self-care is important. Take care of yourselves mentally. Learn to laugh. Learn to do things for you. Learn to do things with your family. Create those fun memories that will take you through. Sometimes when the tough patches come, you can smile and remember that your grandchild was with you and he said a funny word or he hugged you or he ran to you when daddy went after him. When daddy says stop and he didn't, and daddy gets up to give him that little pinch that he runs to you and hugged onto you and looked to you for support and strength and to save him, right? And so use those little things to just <clears throat> take care of your mental health because otherwise you'll be broken through and through. So make sure you spend time with family because that's important. Make sure that you're engaging and supporting because the time will come when we can't do much anymore and we want those fond memories to become a part of the willingness to make sure that we are okay. So don't be mean-spirited. Don't say those ugly words. Don't, don't, don't forget kind deeds um, and don't ever when the times are good and the kids are doing that it's okay but when they're not able to then we think they're not genuine they're not caring let us remember at all times that the good that is done for us and my grandmother said as a child and I never forget she said never forget kindness never forget kindness and so let us know that as we remember the kind things and as we say thank you, we're not going to be able to say to everybody every day. But in, in passing, don't forget it. Don't forget it. Remember it. Don't remember when you ask and they didn't give it. Don't remember just that. Remember when you ask and they didn't give it. But also remember when they did offer, when they did give, when they were there. So build your memories, people. Make them be fond memories. Don't let the ugliness eat away at you. Don't let the ugliness 
prevent you from continuing to do good. But hold on to that which is steadfast and understand that the God who made heaven and earth, the God who was there in the days of, of, of Noah when he built his ark, when Jonah was thrown in this in this in the sea and was swallowed up by the whale. Um, just remember them when Daniel was cast in the lion's den, right? All of those days, remember that it was the same God who was there with them then. That's the same God with us today. And if He had the the the, the cripple to rise up and walk again, then He will create the changes for us as he sees necessary. Be good to yourselves, people. Be good to yourselves. I'm not telling you to go out and do good. You follow your heart. I, I, you know, people say, what Miss Bevue said, I remember one person in particular, she always, you know, regardless of what was going on for her, she would, oh, you said, closed mouth doesn't get fed, so I'm coming to tell you I need... And, and I smiled because it wasn't a person who was in 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 dire need. It it was a person who just wanted and, and would think, you said, if you don't open your mouth, you're not going to be fed. But if you want to do good, you have a lot of needy people out there. Do it for those in need, not for those who just want. Do it for those in need. Do it for those in need. Be good to yourselves so you can be good to others, right?